Going on now to topic two of chapter nine, exponential functions. Our four key words, asymptote, decreasing, exponential, increasing. So when we study function in this form, where our variable is the exponent, this is what we call an exponential function. Now to see this here, let me write this out for you. We say that uh, if And I think we can pick it up right over here, where we're looking at values of A. If our base is greater than 1, we say the function is increasing. If our function is less than 1, but greater than 0, we say it is decreasing. So this is increasing, decreasing. And we say that this x-axis here, we can look at it in this picture, that is called the x asymptote asymptote okay so let's go on and take a look at some of these graphs now because a lot of this is graphing when we see a graph that looks like so this is let me underline it here for you that a is greater, let me clear that up here, it looks a little confusing, that A is greater than 1 in this graph. And then in the next graph, which will look like this, so I can leave it here to look at the sign. If you have something that looks like so here, that is this one. It's a fraction less than 1, but greater than 0. Remember, in this type of relationship, uh, A has to, cannot be a 1. It's greater than 1, less than 1, but greater than 0. Okay. So once again, this is the case here where the line, exp, uh, the exponent represented here is greater than zero, but less than one. It's a fraction. Okay, we're going to start to do some graphing now. And again, we're not going into great detail. I go over this in the lesson. And what we want here is to make a little t-chart where we put various values. And remember, it's going to be 4 to the x power here. So we're going to use a 0, a 1, a negative 1, a 2, a negative 2. We could do a 3 and a negative 3. So if x here is 0, anything to the 0 power is 1. If it's 1, 4 to the first is 4. 
And when we have a negative exponent, it's just the reciprocal of what it would be in its positive form. So this is 1 fourth. This is going to be 2 squared is 16. And to the negative 2 is 1 16. And this one is really too big for our chart here, but it would be 64 and 1 64th. So when we go to do our curve for something like this, uh, 0, 1 is always a good one. It's In fact, all of them have this as their y-intercept. And then 1's 1, 4. So 1, 4. So with that, I can start to sketch that here going up. Oh, I didn't do that too well here, but there we go. That's this curve. And if we had, and I can put that on the same line here, if this were y f of x equals 1 fourth x, uh, all of these would be, in a sense, the other side. And again, it would come through here, but go up there to 4 and would come down like so. And your axis of symmetry is your y-axis. And what is the equation of the y-axis, by the way? And it's x equals 0. That would be a vertical line through the origin here. But that's the y-axis. And that's the axis of symmetry. And we see it. Now, if this were, instead of a 4, a 2, or a 3, We'd have, these would be the same, but these would be different. And let's plot the 2 there, just to show you relatively how easy this is. So this first point would be the same, but then it would go up to 2 to the first, would be 2, so the line would come up like so. And then its reciprocal on the other side, in a sense, would come up again through 2 here. And if it were a, f a 3, this is the 4, the 3 would be in there in the middle somewhere. One third would be here and so on and so forth. So you get an idea of when you see something like that, uh, it's going to be a 0, 1 right there, and then it will be a 4. Then if this is a 2 or 3, it'll be a, always 0, 1, and then a 1, 2, or a 1, 3, and then go on and so forth. Okay, now let's take a look at this next one. And it's y equals 2 to the x minus 3. Now, when it's in this form, this indicates your y-intercept. And if we had, for instance, y equals 2x, let's plot that one first and 2x, so that would be a 0, 1, right there. And then it would be 1, it would be a 2. And then 2 would be a 4. And then uh, 4 would be an 8, which would be up here somewhere. So this is your basic 
curve here. I'm going to try to do the best I can in sketching that. Now, when it has a negative 3 here, again, giving you an idea how to sketch this, it's just going to drop this down from this 1, 1, 2, 3. It's going to go right there. And it's going to have basically that same curve. And then way up there. So that your new uh, asymptote down here is going to be uh, y equals negative 2. Okay, and you can see it's a similar curve. It's just that it's been dropped down. And maybe this comes up a little more like that. But anyway, to give you an idea of sketching it. So generally on your test and on your quiz bees, they're not going to ask you to, uh, you know, do all of the points and sketch them, but just to pick them out from what they are. So if you have this background, that's very useful. Okay. Now, for this one, it's a little different from what we've just done. So let's do this one. Again, if we had y equals 2x, that would be here as a 1, a 2, a 4, and would look like so. Now that we have here, instead of just a plain x, we have a minus 3. This is going to translate this three units, as we have been saying, to the right. Even though it looks like you think, well, negative 3 should be go the other way. No, because it's negative h in the formula. And depending upon what sign this is, this is going to be a positive 3 here. In the formula, it looks like that. And again, we're doing some stuff we didn't include, except if those who did those extra sections in Chapter 8 have a little more background. But whenever we see something like this, the shortcut is, you're going to translate that three units to the right, so that when it's drawn, instead of being there, one, two, three, it will look like this. That is three units translated to the right. When it's negative there in the exponent, that's what it looks like. Okay, now for something like this, let's take a look at it. And we might think of this one as y equals 8 uh, x. And this is the reciprocal of that. So if you were to draw this, this would be here if x were 0. This would be a 1 right there. And then if this was 1, this would be... Oh, I put that on the wrong one here. Because I see this is in twos now instead of ones. So it's going to be right there. And then if it's one, it goes up to eight right there. And then if it's two, it goes up to 64, which is way off the graph. So this one is going to look like so. Now, if it's one eighth, it's just the reflection of this. It's going to go through there, but it comes down like so. Okay? 
And again, the uh, pictures of these well-made are in your uh, booklet. All right, as we look at number 11, a couple of things going on there. But if you understand the graph, that's what we're shooting for here. And let me just draw this one. Y equals 2X. So we're getting familiar with this one. One there, one there, one there. So that is the graph of Y equals 2X. Now notice it has Y equals x to the uh, 2 to the x power, but it's x minus 1 now. So that means this is going to be shifted over. Let me write it in blue. And bear with me. It's going to be shifted over one unit to the right because it's negative 1, one unit to the right. So this is going to be shifted over like so. But now it has negative 4. That is your downward uh, transformation, so to speak. This is up or down. And this term, by the way, is k. Uh, this letter here, you may or may recall, is h. But we're going to shift it down now from this 1 down to here, where it's 3. So. It goes over 1 here, up 1, and then up 2. And then your 3 is your uh, x asymptote right in through here. So the curve goes like so. Anyway, I didn't do that too well here. but uh, So it's over... 1, and then down 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay? So you get an idea what it's all about there. Now remember, you don't put these other ones here. I'm just showing you the relationship to it. Uh, we'll skip these, but now what we're doing is we are doing some We'll skip 12. Uh, we're going to do number 13, because what have they done here? They have done what they call a the inverse of what we had. So originally it was y equals x to the second. We're now going to reverse the position of the x and y. So we get the inverse of this. So watch what happens here. So if 2 is our base and our exponent now is 0, 2 to the 0 is 1. 2 to the first is 2. And we just get the reciprocals out of these. 2 to the fourth is 4. And it's reciprocal. Uh, 2 to the third is 8. And it's reciprocal. So if we plot this, we get a graph that looks like this. Ah. So this is sort of the inverse of what we had here, where y equals 2 to the x. And if I put that in blue, we know it's a dot there, a dot there, a dot there. And then we had one here up here at 8. So it would have looked a little bit like so. And if we sketch in now, our y, our uh, axis of symmetry, which is right through the y equals x point. Y 
we see now that this is the inverse of this. And if you were to fold it along the dotted lines, you have a reflection. Okay? So the example where we take x equals one half y is going to be if we plotted these instead of a two here we put the y uh, sorry one half here then it's just a reflection of this red line which I now have the green line and your axis of symmetry now instead of being this one here it's actually your x-axis. Okay, so a lot of stuff going on here and hopefully, you know, through practice you can start to see this and having this in your booklets a very good tool. Alright, let's go on. Now, we've done these, but let's take a moment to see if in fact you can do them. And I will talk you through it. Remember, if you want to do it on your own, just pause the tape. So we have y equals 4x. Well, if this is 0, this is going to be a 1. If this is a 1, this is going to be a 4. So 1, 4, and then 2 is 16 up here. So you get a curve that looks like so. Now, if this is a Y in which we reflect this down as its inverse, it will look like, and I'll do it in blue, it's going to be a 1 over here. And then it's going to be a 4. And then it'll be a 16 way out there. So we get a something that looks like I had to take a, a step back on that a little bit, and I have it right here. So it's the reflection of this would be there, and then this one would be down here, and then the uh, 16, I believe, or whatever is out there is out over here. So that again, if you fold it along the axis of symmetry, which is y equals x, we get our inverse function here. Okay, so just switching these letters around, and notice that if it were the two, it would be up closer, wider here and wider here. And then if it were a five, it would be in here somewhere, and then a six, and then a seven. Uh, the closer you get to a larger number, the closer it's going to bring it to this axis and then later to this axis down here. Okay, for this next one, as we look at it, it's one third. So one third makes it uh, on the other side, so to speak, and I'm just going to sketch this a little bit here with the idea that hopefully I can show you what's going on. So again, a three, everything goes there, uh, and eventually it'll go there as well for the other one. But here, it's going to go one third, it's going to go this way. Now remember if it was two, that would be like two, four, 
to go here two four to give you an idea. Get rid of that dot. There we go. Now a one third. So this would be like one half. One third is even closer in. So that would be out in here somewhere. So it's reciprocal. Of that. Again, this would be like the one third here. And then it's reciprocal down here. It's inverse, I should say, is this way here. OK, so you get an idea a little bit about what it's like. And these next ones are just basically to use the calculator. Here, the population is this, get an estimate and these others. Okay, well, I think I've covered what I wanted. I made it a little shorter than uh, having the 30 minutes, so we'll wind it up for topic 9.2.